really crafted as each other or if there's going to be some that are not as kind of detailed as the other it'll be interesting to see as we play through the game if it's the consistency is there i'm i'm hoping it will be but you never know with these things sometimes um until you play the game so um let's uh let's let's move before we move forward actually let's just take a little pause here because i feel like i've been uh, talking frantically here uh, with the statistics. We're going to go back to them in a second, but uh, I just wanted to quickly uh, give give everyone that's listening. Like so, uh, since the game has been coming out, I've literally uh, been collecting like a, obviously all the magazines, the PlayStation magazine, the Edge done a quite a decent spread on Red Dead as well, um, and um, yeah, I think I, if I was going to recommend any magazine for the game. Um, I would probably say that the PlayStation or Xbox uh, magazine probably done the best job because they give a, a poster in it as well, um, and it's of it's actually of John Marston, but it's it's a nice piece of artwork in there. And uh, if you're a collector like me, it kind of just sits well, and I quite quite liked it. And also, there is a decent level um, of information in there about the game like from their experience but um, if you're somebody that's not too bold about posters and collectibles then i recommend edge because they um they recently got their hands on the game and actually a few of their guys got to try it out and it's it's quite a different perspective to hear from people's experience but the one thing that really stood out to me was the fact that somebody commented in there was like it only took him 30 seconds to realize they were playing a game is so going to be innovative for the next crop of games that they're all going to be chasing this one when um, people see it so that really stood out to me um, the fact and this was like a guy that plays a lot of different games um, and you know he doesn't sort of say things lightly so that stood out for me so I think hopefully that's a that's a good sign of things to come there um, for us um, okay Matt let's let's go back in here to where we were so um, we were talking about um, the the hunting part of it just trying to see where we're up to so um how about this then so we're going into back to snow uh, i'm guessing this is going to be quite a big part of the open world matter is there going to be a bit of a, a part here so snow will um, accumulate naturally in places that have been um, trodden over so snow will also fall off trees um, and again details like that uh, amazing really i mean I get visually, Matt, this could be one of the most, and I don't want to sound sort of too uh, corny here, but it could be one of the most beautiful games that we see as far as sort of real open worlds, tangible games. Because I've I've seen a lot of open world games that look spectacular, but, I, you know, you always think, oh, I, I want to get to that part of the game and I want to go and have a look at that. But then when you get there, it's like... Yeah, then it just becomes like you can totally see where somebody's developed the shape and the tree and all the rest of it. Like it takes you out of it a bit. Now I'm hoping in this, much like Zelda, that I'll be looking around and going, "Oh, actually, I fancy riding to this area. That looks like quite interesting. Let me go and scavenge." And you know, um, the the great thing with the Zelda game um, was the fact that. Every everything around you seemed to react to you, reacted to the player as opposed to the other way around, um, which makes all the difference. But um, what about for you, Matt? Are you somebody that plays open world games and likes to explore um, a lot, or do you stick with the narrative of the story and and sort of side missions and not go off too much into a into into your you know get lost as it as it is um, with these things with the sort of open world experience. I kind of like to like play the game and I don't like to leave any stone unturned. Mm -hmm. I like to try and see all that I can see. Mm -hmm. And one of the best things I like about these kind of games and like Rockstar and that, when you come out into the wilderness, you have every possibility that you're going to run into a mission that you Mm -hmm. would not have otherwise found had you not been the type of person that likes to go exploring. And also, like, I hope this game has a lot of sort of uh, treasure to be found. Yeah. Not only like cheese, like 
digging it up with a spade. You know, <laughs> there may be a sense to that in it and stuff, and that would be a good thing. But stuff out there that you wouldn't have found otherwise, unless you'd been out there looking for it, like special weapons and that. This is this is uh, how I like to play, and also like areas like in the wilderness is where you'll find probably the best horses as well. So it's always point. worth exploring. Yeah, I'm glad that. And one thing, um, one thing, one of the review guys said, he said that they absolutely reward the player that wants to go and you know spend time exploring strange places that are not really featured heavily in the narrative of the story. So it's going to reward those people that do want to do that um, in a good way. And um, like Matt was saying, there is a lot of. There's a lot of hidden treasures around. So if you are that type of per- person, and believe me, I think there was a guy um, who, I believe he he um, he was autistic, but he played Zelda Breath of the Wild, and he found every single seed <laughs> in, I think it was under four days, Matt, believe it or not. And my God, there are... Tons of the damn things um, everywhere. I just for me, it would be mind-boggling. But he focused on doing it, and he achieved it. And my hats off to him, no doubt about it. Because I tell you, mate, I I don't know. Even if I did try, it, I I I think it would probably take me over a year um, to have the patience and knack to go through every single thing to get that. But um, you do get people out there that are interested in things like that. So I wonder um, what some of the records will be into to that sort of thing. Um, Matt, something that I'm not sure we may touch on. We may touch on it, but we might not. So I I'm, I'm just want to talk about it now. The actual open world, the size of it, the scale of it, um, lots of different rumours about this because they're saying that they're implementing the original map to a certain degree. Um, we know that Mexico is probably going to be featured in it again. But in this, the, the, in terms of the, the, the size and the scale of things, Matt, how big is this going to be? And is that an important thing these days? Is it not important? Because to me, I think, yeah, you can have the biggest open world game and believe me, Zelda did a very good job at doing that. But, you know, more importantly, I don't just want a huge world of full of nothing in it either. Like, I'm not too bothered if it happens to be slightly smaller, but yet they've, you know, put all the, the huge level of detail in it. I'm, I'm more for that than I am just creating a huge open world. Um, but we've kind of like, you know, just for the sake of having it as big as it is without anything that interesting. Now, granted, absolutely granted, there are going to be huge um, gaps between towns because literally that's how things were. So you've got to expect that. And that might be where the sheer size of this comes in, because if they're going to do things realistically, they, you know, they're going to have to they're going to have to make it seem like that there, there is that. So. Granted, that might be a thing. However, um, what about you, Matt? How do you think? It, like, I've, I've kind of, I've got no real clear answer as to how exactly how huge this is. But let's say, would you say this is going to be um, the sort of scale of Zelda Breath of the Wild, or even bigger, or do you think that it'll be scaled down a little bit smaller? Rockstar have ever tried to implement into a game right. but that's probably because it is different to anything like GTA mm-hmm. as well because with GTA everything's accessible by car everything moves at such a fast pace and you know we're talking about built up urban areas but this is a very sparse land and you know uh, there's, there's, there's going to be a lot of room to play with and this is what's going to make finding all those treasures we were talking about a little while ago even more like of an achievement to actually go out there and find them because you're mm-hmm. dealing with a massive search area here yeah. Uh, so yeah I don't really think it's such a bad thing because it you'll get those long journeys on your horse and I'm sure it'll be like much like the Witcher where you can just sort of almost auto-tune your horse to actually follow the pre-selected path so it won't be so much of a chore getting to where you're going yeah. but I think you'll have plenty of options to uh, steer off the path and make your own way somewhere yeah, that's cool. Uh, I think, yeah, I'll, I'm, I'm kind of guessing that it is going to be the biggest, definitely, the rock star have done. Um, in terms of, is it going to be, you know, everyone's saying, is it going to be as big as Breath of the Wild? Is it not? I, I'm not sure, but, like, it, it's definitely going to be 
let's put it this way it will be as big as it needs to be I, I believe I don't think they're going to just do it for the sake of trying to outdo anything else I think it's going to be as big as it needs to be um, and it's going to you know let's put it this way it's going to be big enough that's for sure so um, man there's a crazy little detail I've just read just gone back on so get this this is how the detail is I think probably if I was to have read this at the beginning everyone would you know get a complete image of the level in this straight away so the fact that Arthur can um can have dirt go underneath his fingernails during the game and it's up to you to get it out I mean that's just insane the fact that they're even putting that into this but there you go maybe I should have just read that to begin with and then we all know (laughs) the level of detail then don't we because that is just I've never heard of that before so there's going to be a lot of new things here uh, to this so um, here's some, some other cool things you can pat dogs um, the dogs that you pat then won't bark at you the next time you see them so that's kind of a, a cool little thing there uh, some missions will take you far up into the mountains where you are literally above the cloud line aka the game's weather system so um, that's going to be pretty spectacular i would imagine some good views um, lots of people that you know like with the open world games uh, especially I even like this myself I like to you know th- there are some great imagery um, to get and I think with the weather system in this and the sun and everything else uh, because one of the things I've definitely noticed with some of the screenshots and grabs that we've seen in the gameplay trailers is if you look at the sun they've done an excellent job of um, the kind of the lighting in the game and it it sounds it sounds something silly but it does make a hell of a lot of difference and um, I'm really glad that they've they've got that um, in this and they've really took the time to do that because that that will make or break the kind of um, you know the beauty of the game in a lot of ways when you're playing it so that's that's cool they put them in um Okay, so you can shoot off this. What Matt, uh, what I was saying earlier, actually, uh, we've already covered that about the hat. Um, so um, this is interesting. So obviously, um, when you go into maybe a close kill mat with an enemy or whoever it is, um, what it's saying here is kill cams are impacted by your honor. So if you play honorably, the camera on a kill um, will kind of. Re- repay you and uh, will focus on Arthur um, you know as a, and he'll shoot them in a way of sort of an honourable person but if you are dishonourable um, it will focus on the kill and re- represent it in a more intense way and more violent looking um, the less honour you have the less visible Arthur will be in the background of the camera view so that's interesting that they are giving you that experience so if you're gonna play as a good-hearted guy um which i don't know how many of these game players are gonna play it that way um but you know free to do what you want or a bit of both as i probably will be um i kind of like you've got that option there and it's gonna it's gonna really bring you in to you know how you're playing the game which is good because it makes you feel like everything you're doing um, is gonna you know influence things coming and Matt like just to segue a little bit here like the fact that Rockstar have brought this into the games like so let's you know we've seen in some of the gameplay trailers it'll say okay you whenever you come across somebody you're gonna be able to interact with them now you're gonna be able to be you know nice friendly with them you're gonna be able to maybe be hostile with them there's about four at least four options with each um, part of that now. They haven't really done that in many of their games, Rockstar. Like, even with GTA Five, it's been sort of like... You, you walk past somebody and they make a comment and that's it. Um, and they automatically, your character just sort of says something back to them, depending on how they are as a character. But um, the fact they've put this in the game, Matt, like, is, this is like... is How, how good is that going to be in terms of the payoffs towards the end? Like, are we going to feel like... I'm not saying it's going to get to the stage of Telltale um, or, you know, sort of Detroit become human. But this definitely adds a huge layer to the game already. And the fact that, you know, it depending on how you react is going to, you know, change things. And I have heard that 
that all the characters are really strong. There's no character like most of the AI in this are. You can kill them off straight away. However, in somebody else's game, they might actually come back later, and you'll be like, "Oh, okay." Um, like that, that they've got like a little mini story going on, and what would have happened if I killed them at the beginning? That kind of thing. And so I was reading the. Book.